Hello, welcome to this second video about how to start using SharePoint API together with Power BI. In our first video, what we saw was how to create a list by using PNP PowerShell. So if you haven't yet used PNP PowerShell or you don't have a test list where you can uh, do today's exercises, I will highly recommend you to go and watch this other video accompanied also by a blog post. Now let's go to these exercises that we have prepared for you. Let me make a quick pause in here to invite you to The Vault. The Vault is a toolkit that contains everything you need to wireframe, prototype, build, and document your next awesome Power BI project. We have included the files you need to jumpstart your next Power BI report, as well as an extensive training gallery focused on Figma, UI, and UX for Power BI developers. You can find The Vault in beef.pro slash The Vault and get a 20% discount using the code beef20. Now, let's go back to the video. So the first thing that we have to do is that we need to go to our blog post on SharePoint API using Power BI. Today, uh, and through this and the next videos, we are going to go through all the code that it's uh, containing to this blog post. Uh, now, I will make just a very uh, small pause in here to explain you what is the reason of using the SharePoint API and not the custom or the standard connector that comes together with Power BI. Basically, when you are facing very big lists on SharePoint, that's when you want to start using the SharePoint API uh, because the default uh, or the standard connectors that come with Power BI don't perform that well when you are talking about elements of several thousands of elements. Still, if you are facing lists with some hundreds of elements and this will not grow with time, I will uh, definitely tell you to probably stick with the default connectors, but if not, go and uh, work with the SharePoint API, which is definitely a lot more flexible, but it does require a little bit more of coding, but with time, this becomes fun. So let's go and take a look how this one is done. So the first thing that uh, we are going to do is that I will share with you how to create uh, or what is like the standard connectors, how they, do they look like. I will come control C and what I am doing in here is that I am copying the root of my SharePoint site. Us usually the root comes with this uh, static uh, part of the URL that comes from the organization and now this is the site that I am on or the SharePoint site which is called the BIF test site. Okay, I will come and copy this part of the URL, control C then I will come back to my Power BI. I will click on New Source. I will click on More and on More. Now I will go to my SharePoint. I will search for the SharePoint connector, uh, SharePoint. In here, I have my SharePoint folder, SharePoint online list or SharePoint list. This is actually a SharePoint online, online list. So I will click on it and then I will click on Connect. I will paste the URL and in here we have two implementations. So basically the implementation can be either the 1.0 or the 2.0. The 1.0 will bring all the columns that have that are within the list. And the 2.0 will only has the ability to select from a view. And basically when you are working with SharePoint, you can define views and the views can contain the columns that you select, right? So in this case, when you are using the implementation 2.0, you can also select a view that only contains the columns that you want to show. In this case, I will select the implementation 1.0. I will click on OK. And on the UI, what I will see now is that it will show me all the elements within the SharePoint site that I can choose from. So in here, what I will do is I will select the SharePoint test list and I will click on OK. Remember that at this point, and remember that we are using what is the standard connector on, uh, on SharePoint. Let me just quickly go to the advanced editor and you will see that the, uh, that the function that it's using this standard connector is this one that it's called a uh, SharePoint tables. Okay. So we see, and I click on done and we see that the response that we have is all the columns of that list. Now you may be start understanding that when you have very big list bringing so much data and so much data that, that you are not using, it, it may come into, you may come into performance issues. So now let's go and 
uh, let's just leave this query right now as it is. We are pro uh, going to use it later. Now, let's go back to our post. So, and uh, in our blog post, what we are going to see now is the first code, okay? So basically the first code, what it will do is it will retrieve the, uh, it will retrieve the same SharePoint list that we have been working on. I will click on new source and in new source, I will click on more, sorry, on the blank, on blank query, new source and I will click on blank query. I will go to the advanced editor and I will paste the code on the advanced editor. Let's go and take a look of what the advanced editor uh, shows us here into, into the code. And basically what we are doing is first we are uh, requesting two variables. Uh, the first one will be the base URL and the second one will be the list name. So the base URL, I already have it here and this was this base URL. It doesn't need a forward slash. And now we are going to use the, we are going to include in here the SharePoint name. In here, I also have it somewhere around here, the SharePoint list name that we are going to uh, make the re request to the API. And now we have the step that is called source. This step contains the function which is called web.contents. If you don't have that much experience with web.contents, I will invite you to watch uh, or to read my blog post about web.contents, which contains a very thorough explanation of this function. Now, in web.contents, what we are doing is that we are including the base URL and concatenating with the endpoint of the API, which in this case is get list by title, and we are getting all the items from this list. I will click now on done and you will see that I am in here receiving an XML document. Now, I don't like working with XML document basically because I am not used to. So now the next thing that we are going to do is that we are going to add these headers within our request. Remember that when you make a request, even if you don't see them, the requests contain headers. And in this case, the headers we will ex uh, we will specify in the header, which name is accept, that the response that we want is an is a JSON uh, is a JSON file, the one that we want as a response. So this is something that uh, it is important for you to keep in mind. So in this case, the only thing that I will do is that I will copy this part of the code, which is the only difference between uh, this one and the previous. Then I will go back to my Power Query. I will go home. I will go to my Advanced Editor. And here on my Advanced Editor, I will paste, uh, sorry. And here on my Advanced Editor, I will paste the headers. Remember that the headers are inside the web.contents function, okay? And I will click on done. Now you see that what we are receiving in here is a JSON file. So you see, you saw how the icon changed from an XML to a JSON. Now we are receiving a JSON file. Let's continue or let's double click with this J in this JSON file. And now uh, we can click on the list of values and we see that we have records. Let me just click on the list and then I will transform this to table. And we see that every record contains this information. Now let's go back to the post. And in the post, what we have in here is the next part of the post is that we are going to include some query parameters. In this case, we are going to include uh, the query parameter that is called top, which basically tells us I only want the first 50 elements, then or the top 50 elements. Then I want it, I want to expand a field. If we want to expand a field, we need to include this expand, and then we need to include this, the fields that we want to include. 
let's go and let's see how this one go this, this one looks i will copy once more only this part of the code which is the only difference between the previous one now let's go back to power query i will click on home then i will click to, on my advanced editor um, this one was not really nice formatted let's try to uh, let's try to quickly format the, format this on a on a nicer way uh, so we have our web.contents we have our base url then we have our headers and our headers will be in this case it's only one which is the accept header And now we just format this a little bit nicer. And before the headers, we are going to include now our uh, query, our query parameters. Let me format uh, this in a nicer way. And now we have our query parameters uh, sorry our code nicely formatted and now we are going to go again through the code so we have a json document because we know that it's this one is a json when i double click uh, this json this uh, this web.contents function it was grabbed by a json function because it was actually a json document the one that we are we're receiving actually if we don't have we wouldn't have these headers uh, we could use xml document but in this case, let's just do a JSON. That's the way I am used to uh, work. And in this case, the top, I will make mark the top 10. I don't want to expand this uh, any field by, by the time. And I want to select the ID and I want to select the title. But also the color. But also I, I want to select the column that is called color and animal. Animal. Now I will click on done. There was an error, and I believe that it's because color was misspelled or it was spelled on the American variant. So let me just quickly go in here and it's a color. And now you see we received the top 10 records. And the information that we are receiving is the one that we requested for. Instead of receiving all the columns, we are only receiving ID, uh, title, color, and animal. Now, let's pause in here and talk a bit about SharePoint columns. So basically, you will have in SharePoint columns, you will have simple columns, but you also have complex columns. A simple columns will be like an integer, a number. A decimal number can even be a simple column, but then you will have complex columns. And one of them, for example, is the person column. Because when you select in a SharePoint list and you select that a column, this is a person column, this does not only contain information about the name of the person. And let's say that when you are talking about a person, it contains more attributes within the record. And in this case, you can talk about a person has a name, has an email, probably has a department that the person works, a GUID, and so on. So when you select the person column, this is a complex column. And let's go and take a look how we are going to deal with these complex columns. So in this case, what we are going to do in here is that we are going to expand and we're going to say to the to the code and in our request hey i want to is the owner in my case the column is called owner i am i want to expand the owner because the owner has several attributes and which is the attribute that i want to expand from the owner and thus, then i will write i will write owner from the owner field I want to expand it by email. And then I will click on done. Now let's go and take a look at the records. And now you see that the owner contains a record within, uh, within the record, right? But now let's just click on the first one. 
and we will see that the record of the owner contains the email of the of the person from the column person on our SharePoint list. Now let me delete this step. And now we have our 10 our 10 uh, records that we are requesting. Now we can expand these records. I will click on OK. Now you see that we have the title, color, animal ID. And for the owner, I will select the email because that's the only one that we are expanding. And we have email, title, color, animal, and ID from our SharePoint list. Now, uh, the next thing that we are going to do is that we are going to talk a little bit about pagination but I will leave this for a next video. I hope that so far you like and enjoy uh, talking about SharePoint API. Please, uh, if you have any comment or question, do not hesitate to leave me in the comments and I will try to respond to, to it. And uh, do not forget to like, share and subscribe and see you next time. Bye bye.